Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we want to find the end slope and deflection of this cantilever beam, uh, but we want to use the moment area method by parts. So in previous videos, we did solve this video. This is what we were left off with. Um, we just used the regular moment area method and we generated a single M over EI diagram. We found the uh, slope and deflection with all the tangents and first and second moment area theorems. So what we want to do in this video is we want to do basically the same problem, but we want to solve this by parts. So when we do it by parts, we basically take the method of superposition and say that this system here, this cantilever beam with uh, a single point load and uh, an applied moment acting on it is the, is the sum of the system with just the point load acting on it and the system with just the applied moment, assuming everything else is held constant. So what we do with this is we draw each one's shear force diagram and then their bending moment diagrams. And because the sum of these two systems basically represents what's going on in this actual system, then the sum of their bending moment diagrams represents the actual bending moment diagram. And we can just stack them like this. So if we look at this, uh, the far left-hand side of the bending moment diagram, if we have minus 160 plus 60, that's, a, that's an actual value of negative uh, 100 kilonewton meters. And then the right-hand side, this is 0 plus 60, it's ending at 60 kilonewton meters. So when we look at what we had from just using the regular moment area method, we're going from negative 100 kilonewton meters to positive 60. So basically stacking these two graphs by parts, just like this, um, is going to give us basically exactly the same uh, bending moment diagram as if we had just done it in a, in a one-shot without using the method of superposition. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to take the bending moment diagram, just make a copy of it, and uh, usually we're just going to draw it right below the, uh, the bending moment diagram. That seems to be a convenient place to put it. Um, and we need to convert this to the M over EI diagram. So literally we write M over EI here, and we divide all of our critical value. Well, we'll divide every point in the graph by EI, and EI was up here. It is 20 times 10 to the 6 newton meter squared. So 60 kilonewton meters divided by that is 0 0.003 meters to the minus 1, and 160 divided by EI is negative 0 0.008 meters to the minus 1. All right, so now we are ready to do the first moment area theorem, moment area theorem which is uh, where we're just taking the integral of the M over EI diagram. So basically, in this case, we're summing up the areas, and we are going to go from the interval from A to B, because we know that the slope and displacement at A is going to be zero, and uh, when we take our measurements relative to that, that will be the actual slope and displacement for B when we find the information about the tangent lines. So we come down here, and uh, similarly, like we were doing here, where we're adding up the composite shapes um, in this case, we're just adding up different composite shapes. So let's call this uh, area one, and this is area two. So this, uh, the area of area one is just base times height. So it's going to be, what is that, two meters uh, times 0 0.003 meters to the minus one. So that's just uh, 0 0.006. Uh, those meters cancel out, and so we're left with units of radians. Area two is a triangle, so it's just one half base times height. So we get uh, one half times the base was two meters times its height is uh, negative 0 0.008 meters to the minus one. Those meters cancel out with each other and we're left, and those, those two cancels out with each other as well, so negative 0 0.008 radians. So when we add those two together to perform the first moment area theorem between A and B, um, basically it's just A1 plus A2, and that's going to give us the relative slope between points A and B, and uh, negative 0 0.008 plus that is going to be negative 0 0.002 radians. And this negative sign is indicating that our angle is like this. It's coming down from the horizontal all right, now, so for the second moment area theorem, we need the uh, to look the distances from the centroids all the way over to point B here. And this is pretty easy because we're uh, the, the distance from, is, we're just finding the distance of the centroid to the edge of that shape. Uh, so X bar one, the, the centroid is just going to be one half the base. And so that's going to just be one meter. And then for a triangle, so for X bar two, 
uh, to the short side of the triangle is going to be 2 thirds space and so that's going to equal uh, that's 1.333 meters and then when we apply the second moment area theorem it's uh, the tangential deviation of got that backwards b with respect to a and so this is going to be x bar 1 times a1 plus x bar 2 times a2 and uh, if we sum those up we get negative 0 0.00466 meters which is uh, negative 4.66 meters and again these values the tangential deviation and the relative slope these are talking about the differences in tangent lines but negative 0 0.002 and negative 4.66 if we, go bo if we go back up to the work from the first time that we went through this problem, uh, where we just did the regular moment area method, we found uh, negative for the, the relative angle here, it was negative 0 0.002, so we got the same thing uh, by doing it by parts. And then the tangential deviation, we also got negative 4.66 millimeters, and uh, those are the exact numbers that we got here when we did it by parts. And again, remember guys, this is a cantilever beam, so when we... Uh, when we draw on these uh, tangent lines at B and the tangent line at A, again, when we're when we're finding T B with respect to A, it's this it's this measurement here, and it is Y B. It's the actual displacement of B because that tangent is right on the curve there at the given slope of the deflected structure, and uh, and then the, for the angle here between them, theta B with respect to A, um, the reason that's equal to theta b is because, well, this is the slope at the deflected structure, or sorry, this is the, the slope at this point in the deflected structure, and uh, when we continue that back, you see that it intersects at the same angle that that slope is actually on with the horizontal, which is the tangent at a, and so we, we get these, uh, these values actually equaling the exact values that we're looking for for the slope and displacement at the end of the beam. So when you're solving these problems, uh, if you're asked to do it moment area method like the regular way, or if you're asked to do it by parts, uh, now you can do it either way. Or um, if you're just asked to solve for these problems, then you can really you can just pick whichever one you prefer. And uh, sometimes uh, you'll see that when we do it by parts here, um, the geometry actually ends up being quite a bit more simple, and uh, especially in the calculation of like centroids and that sort of thing. And, and there's a lot less calculations when we're doing it by parts than when we had it by here. But then again, if you do it this way, there's a little bit of advantages here, like you get to see the concavity uh, very clearly from the bending moment diagram, which helps you draw your deflected shape. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's up to you guys.